what is the fate of the international Afghan students? Now, a lot of them during the holidays, they remained here in Tajikistan. So supposedly uh, they would be able to continue their enrollment. But the question does remain, what about those who went to Afghanistan, got caught because of what's going on there and now likely cannot make their way back? But first, let's check out the charming Horog City Park. Come on. You'll love this park if you're a water lover. Just steer clear of the river. This is the same river we saw when we were on the M41 heading to Mulgam. Now, the municipal authorities do warn you that when you come to the park, there is a fast flowing river to beware of. And it's good advice. There are so many beautiful rivers in Tajikistan, but if you're not careful, beauty can quite quickly turn to tragedy. I'm really liking Horog, and up until last year, its big draw was its proximity to its famous neighbour. Afghanistan's only a bridge away, and, and it's true, it is only a bridge away, and yet it is ever so far now. It's a bridge I would have loved to have taken. A hundred years ago, the borderlands of Tajikistan and Afghanistan were one country, and up till last year, Horog was the base to explore them all. It was so safe, but almost with a sense of irony, there is a bullet point here that says, Afghan Barakshan is the most secure province in Afghanistan. This used to be true up until about a hundred days ago. This used to be very true. Never in the history of Afghanistan was the Badakhshan region taken by the Taliban and the Wakhan Corridor remained completely free of any Taliban influence throughout its history until... Horog's a really picturesque town, but I spent less time than I would have liked. Even so, I learned a lot. Unlike Dushanbe, the dominant sect of Islam practiced here is the Ismaili variety, which immediately sets Horo quite apart from the west of the country. The Toki is another distinctive feature of Horog. All through Central Asia, especially in Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, and, and actually Turkmenistan, you do see um, hats like this, but the Pamiri ones are quite, quite distinctive. They're colourful, they are perfectly rounded, whereas the others tend to be a bit more of a, of a rhombus or a square shape. And um, they're quite pretty, but unfortunately the Pamiri seem to be built with smaller heads. By the way, I'm thinking of doing a feature just on men's hats. Here I am at Jumez's shop in Istanbul's Grand Bazaar, acquainting myself with the handsome Ottoman style caps. You know, one of the surprising things about Horog is that it is host to the University of Central Asia. And it really is a university for Central Asia because you get lots of international students. And I met a few from Uzbekistan, from India, from Pakistan, and even from Afghanistan. And I envy the students their campus life. The Alpine grounds are serene and sublime and definitely worth a visit if you can wangle one. Leaving Horo, we overtake a soldier convoy. There are more of these convoys on the roads now since the Taliban takeover. We pass even more communities on the Afghan side as the men there wade into the river, so close to us. But our ultimate destination, as we pull away from Horo, are the Garam Chasma Sulphur Springs. So, Garam Chasma Hot Spring is a bit of a unique one, quite different from Bibi Fatima, um, just above Yamchun. So, I've been told the water is 68 degrees, and I'm not certain if that's true, but I'm going to test it right away. So, I, I, it's pretty hot, so I think it could be 68 degrees, but it doesn't feel that much hotter than Bibi Fatima. And down into the Gam Chasma hot springs, where people go take a dip and, um, I suppose, believe that there's some benefit to these um, hot springs being infused with sulphur. Then we push on to our final destination of this gargantuan cross Tajikistan road trip. We're going to the tiny spa town of Kalaikum, but this is everything we did since leaving Dushanbe two weeks ago. 
Things started off rather roughly with blocked roads on the very first day. But I cheered up when I caught my first glimpse of Afghanistan. I enjoyed going into the little communities. And even this bonkers bunny that dogged us for over 20 kilometers was part of the fun. In Karakor, I experienced the weird scientific phenomenon of swimming in a dead lake. And met the hardy Kyrgyz folk who call this harsh landscape home. In Bulunkul, I learned why Kauda was so essential to their survival and met a whole generation of children growing up without Wi-Fi or running water or electricity. The Wahi inspired me with their openness. Hospitality is second nature to them. And I'll never forget the boy by the river, whose manners extol the virtues of the simpler life. This is what we woke up to in Kalaikum. We're still within sight of Afghanistan and this place is delightful. It's my hostel, his name is Angako Bahrom. You can see in the river from Bob and Punch. You can sleep in here. And now it really is the end of our wild adventures in Tajikistan. It's bittersweet, but we've got one more encounter with the mysterious folk over the river in Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum! Assalamu alaikum! He was the last Afghan, the last we would see on this trip anyway. Our wild Pamir adventures have ended and we pull further west, away from my fascination with Afghanistan and back to the capital of Dushanbe where it all began. Fear not, however, for our thrilling Fan Mountain Odyssey is just beginning. With one of the cleverest donkeys I ever met, I went further on foot than I have ever been before. Stick around to enjoy all that and more. No idea when this guy's coming back and I think it's just, it's, 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 uh, it's all kinds of irresponsible.